Senior High School On Air Academy. Unstoppable! Delivering you quality education amidst pandemic. To be fair, school opening to October 5. Unstoppable! Giving you accessible learning platform anytime, anywhere. Whatever form it is. Comprehensible! Stop it up and get yourself ready. I will repeat, then you will do it later on. Accurate! The sphere that includes all living things. Today, we will be talking about rational functions. Simplify. This is Jaw speaking. How may I help you? This is ZFX School Radio's Senior High School On Air. On Air Academy. And now, here's your new episode for Ready on Risks. Your guide for the subject Disaster Readiness and Risk Reduction. Ready on Risks. Did you know that Philippines ranks among the world's most disaster prone countries? Yes, it is highly prone to natural disasters, particularly typhoons, floods, landslides, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, and tsunamis, lying as it does in the typhoon belt. In the active volcanic region known as the Pacific Ring of Fire, and in the geologically unstable region between the Pacific and Eurasian tectonic plates. A proactive day, my dear senior high school students. Studying in new normal is challenging, but I still see your eagerness to learn. I truly commend you for that. We are now down on the third week of fourth quarter of this school year. Let's spice up your learning experience through Radio Escuela Sa Isabela. Join me as we explore more about disaster readiness and risk reduction. I am your radio teacher, Rhea Jane Valle Bernardo. Are you ready for another exciting learning journey? Yay! I'm sure you do. Congratulations for making this far. So, I hope that everyone is ready for today's episode. Get your needed materials and buckle up for another learning ride. Let's go! Before we begin with our lesson, let us check your knowledge about the previous lesson. What was our topic last time? You're right! It is all about geologic hazards, rainfall-induced landslide, and sinkholes. What are the other important conditions that trigger landslide to happen? Absolutely! These are slope angle, friction, and water. Always remember these three things, my dear students. First, the steeper the slope, the greater potential for gravity to pull objects down. Second, Pushing the rock is easier if the surface slopes downhill or is slippery. The same is true for landslides. Steeper slopes have less friction, making landslides more common. Third, the addition of water increases weight to the soil and reduces friction. What are the five distinct types of movement according to Varnes? Correct! They are fall, topple, slide, spread, flow. I'm glad that you fully understood our previous lesson. This time, let us check your answers on our previous lesson. Bring out your quiz notebook. Ready? Let's begin. Number 1. 
in landslides when resisting force is greater than driving force, the slope becomes unstable and results in landslide. What is your answer? Correct. The answer is false. Driving force should be greater than resisting force. Number two. The steeper the slope, the greater potential for gravity to pull objects down, hence, the greater the possibility that landslide may happen when compared to a shallower slope. Did you answer true? You got it right! It's true! Number 3 Landslides are much more common during the rainy season. What is your answer? Very good! The answer is also true. Number 4. Sinkholes only occur in areas where there are large deposits of carbonate rocks. Is it true or false? You're right. It's false. Although areas with large deposits of limestone or calcium carbonate are prone to sinkholes, it can also occur in sandy areas. Let's have number 5. Unusual sounds such as trees cracking or boulders knocking together might indicate landslides. What is your answer? Correct, it's true. Congratulations for a job well done. Let's begin our lesson after this break. we are in the new normal, let us practice new things. Observe social and physical distancing at all times. Disinfect our things. Let our temperature be checked. Always wash your hands with soap and water. Use hand sanitizers. Avoid crowded places. And always wear your face mask and face shield. Always remember these things because health is well. Let us beat COVID-19. A reminder from the Department of Health, Department of Education, and this is station. Did you know that the Philippines is geologically unstable region between the Pacific and Eurasia tectonic plates? Yes, you heard it right. Because of that, our country has an impending hydrometeorological hazards. Hydrometeorological hazard is a phenomenon of atmospheric, hydrological, or oceanographic nature that may cause loss of life, injury, or other health impacts, property damage, loss of livelihoods and services, social and economic disruptions, or environmental damage. There are different types and signs of hydrometeorological hazard found in the Philippines. One is called typhoon. Typhoon is an extremely large and destructive storm that occurs especially in the region of the Philippines or the China Sea. Second is Thunderstorm. Thunderstorm is a weather condition generally characterized by heavy rain, thunder, lightning, and even the possibility of tornado. Next is flash flood or flood. 
It is a local flood of short duration generally resulting from heavy rainfall in the immediate vicinity. Another is the storm surge. Storm surge is an escalating seawater to the coast above normal sea level. Are you up for the next one? Cool! El Niño is a flow of unusually warm water along the western coast of South America that causes many changes in weather in other. Lastly, La Niña. It is a climate pattern that describes the cooling of surface ocean waters along the tropical west coast of South America. La Niña is considered as the counterpart of El Niño, which is characterized by unusually warm ocean temperature in the equatorial region of the Pacific Ocean. Let's move on to the different hydrometeorological hazard maps. Did you know that hazard maps are typically created for natural hazards such as earthquakes, volcanoes, landslides, flooding, and tsunamis? Yes, hazard maps help prevent serious damage and deaths. It is a map that highlights areas that are affected by or are vulnerable to a particular hazard. Amazing, right? There are four climate types in the Philippines according to the Modified Coronas Classification of Climate. These are the types 1, 2, 3, and 4. This system of climate classification was devised by Father J. Corona in 1920, Lantikan 2001, and is based on average monthly rainfall. Accordingly, a dry month is one with less than 50 millimeters of rainfall, but also considers dry a month having more than 100 mm of rainfall that comes after three or more very dry months. Countrywide, the Philippines has a tropical climate with a relatively high temperature and humidity having abundant rainfall. This climate is largely similar to those of countries in Central America. I am sure you're more interested in our topic. So, let's continue. Let's explore more about the modified Corona's classification of climate. Ready? Listen up! Type 1 There are two pronounced seasons. Dry from November to April and wet during the rest of the year. Maximum rain period is from June to September. For type 2, no dry season with a very pronounced maximum rain period from December to February. There is not a single dry month. Minimum monthly rainfall occurs during the period from March to May. How about type 3? Yes, no very pronounced maximum rain period with a dry season lasting only from 1 to 3 months, either during period from December to February or from March to May. This type resembles types 1 since it has a short dry season. And for type 4, 
rainfall is more or less evenly distributed throughout the year. This type resembles type number two since it has no dry season. Are you still with me, my dear students? Great! Let's now move on to our last topic, which is about the tools for monitoring hydrometeorological hazards. But before that, I want you to raise your hands and shake it 10 times. I know you are now ready to listen, so let's proceed. There are instruments or tools for monitoring temperature. First is the thermometer. A thermometer measures the degree of hotness and coldness of a given substance. It operates on the principle of thermal expansion of the material used. Mercury is one of the liquids very sensitive to changes of temperature. Next is a thermograph. It is an instrument that records air temperature continuously on graphing paper. It usually consists of a cylinder aid to revolve once a week once each week by means of clockworks inside. Cool, right? Now, let's have the instruments or tools for monitoring atmospheric pressure. If you have your pen and paper with, don't forget to take down notes. Okay? Great! The first one is Mercurial Barometer. It is a simple barometer made by filling a glass tube 2 inches long with mercury and inverting it so that the open and end of the tube is below the surface of mercury in a cistern. Another is an aneroid barometer. It is made by removing the air from a thin, circular, metallic box. Next is Barograph. This tool is recording barometer. The pen point the traces that pressure curve on the paper is made to move up or down by means of a series of levers attached to aneroid cells or metallic boxes in tandem. There are also tools that monitors the atmospheric humidity. One of these is the sling psychrometer. The sling psychrometer consists of a dry and wet bulb thermometer. The other instrument used to measure humidity is the hygrometer. The hygrometer is less accurate than the psychrometer. Another tool is the hygrothermograph, which records both relative humidity and temperature on graph paper in the same manner as the thermograph and barograph do. Oops! We still have more tools to discover. There are also tools that monitors precipitation. One is an 8-inch rain gauge, so-called because the inside diameter of the collector is exactly 8 inches above a funnel that conducts rain into a cylindrical measuring tube or receiver. Another tool is the tipping bucket rain gauge, which is a type of rainfall recording instrument. It is an upright cylinder that has funnel-shaped collector. For our 
last set of tools are the tools for monitoring clouds. The first one is a ceiling light projector that projects vertically a narrow beam of light to a cloud base. Another way of determining the height of the cloud base is by using a ceiling balloon. A ceiling balloon is a meteorological balloon whose rate of ascent has been predetermined. We also have special instruments like a pilot balloon, which is a meteorological balloon that is filled with gas lighter than air. Radio sound, an airborne instrument used for measuring pressure, temperature, and relative humidity in the upper air is the radio sun. Robinson is an electronic device used for measuring wind, velocity, pressure, temperature, and humidity aloft. Lastly, the Robinson, which is a short for radar and wind. It is an electronic device that measures pressure, temperature, and humidity. There you have it, my dear students. Did you enjoy studying about recognizing signs of impending hydrometeorological hazards? Interpreting different hydrometeorological hazards, maps, and using available tools for monitoring hydrometeorological hazard maps? I know you do, so to further understand our topic, let's have a short activity. All you have to do is write true if the statement is correct and false if it is not are you ready let's start for number one el nino is a climate pattern that describes the cooling of surface ocean waters along the tropical west coast of south america it is true or false absolutely the answer is False. Number 2. Typhoon is an extremely large and destructive storm that occurs especially in the region of the Philippines or the China Sea. True or false? You got it right. It's true. Number 3. El Nino is a flow of unusually warm water along the western coast of South America that causes many changes in weather in other. What is your answer? Great! The answer is true. Number 4. A hazard map is a map that highlights areas that are affected by or are vulnerable to a particular hazard. Hazard maps help prevent serious damage and deaths. Is it true or false? Good! The answer is true. And for number 5, a thermometer measures the degree of hotness and coldness of a given substance. True or false? Very good! The answer is true! Great job, my dear students! Let's assess what you learned after this short break. Pun 
Santa, mamamalengke ka kap po ba? Bakit wala ka pong suot na face mask at face shield? Sa new normal, kailangang sanayin natin ang ating mga sarili na laging magsuot ng face mask at face shield kapag tayo ay lalabas. Ito'y upang makaiwas sa COVID-19. Ito'y isang paalala mula sa DOH, DepEd, at nanghimpilang ito. Tayo na sa Radio Estrella. Tayo na! Time now to assess what you've learned through a short quiz. Kindly prepare your quiz notebook and write the date today. Are you ready? Of course you are! All you have to do is to choose the letter of the correct answer for each question. Let's start! For number one, it is a phenomenon of atmospheric, hydrological, or oceanographic nature. A. Hydrometeorological hazard B. Hydroastronomical hazard C. Hydrometeorological hazard and calamity or D. Neurometeorological hazard Number 2. It is a weather condition generally characterized by heavy rain, thunder, lightning, and even the possibility of tornado. A. Typhoon B. Thunderstorm C. Storm surge or D. Flood Let's proceed to number 3. It is a climate pattern that describes the cooling of surface ocean waters along the tropical west coast of South America. A. El Nino B. La Nina C. Typhoon or D. Flood Number 4. It is the important climatic element and in the Philippines A. Thunderstorm B. Typhoon C. Rainfall or D. Storm surge Number 5 A hazard map is a map that highlights areas that are not affected by or are vulnerable to a particular hazard A. True, B, false. Are you following my dear students? Great, let's continue. For number six, it is a significant increase in ocean temperature over the eastern and central Pacific Ocean. A, La Nina. B, El Nino. C, Flood or D. Storm Surge Number 7. Which device is used to measure pressure? A. Anemometer B. Barometer C. Psychrometer or D. Thermometer Let's have number 8. Which device is used to measure wind speed? A. Anemometer B. Barometer C. Psychrometer or D. Thermometer Or number 9, which device is used to measure relative humidity? A. Anemometer B. Barometer C. Psychrometer or D. Thermometer and for the last item, what happens to the pressure of air when air speed is increased? A. Change in air speed has no effect on pressure. B. Increased air speed reduces the pressure. C. 
C. Increase air speed. Increase the pressure. Or D. Pressure increases regardless of the air speed. And that's it! We are done with your quiz. It's quite easy, isn't it? Your assessment for today will be checked on our next episode, so keep posted. Reminder, let your parents or guardians submit your requirements following the safety protocol. There are still activities that need to be done on your learning activity sheets and I encourage you to accomplish it also. Okay? For any questions and clarifications, don't hesitate to contact your teacher. Thank you for an amazing participation today. Give yourselves a round of applause for a job well done. It's time to say goodbye, but I believe your learnings for today will surely fire up to strive more on your studies. I hope you'll continue to learn amidst pandemic. Always tune in for more fun learning and discovery only here at Radio Escuela Sa Isabela. Let us give credits to Ms. Sharon C. Tarayo for her time and effort in making this script and the whole RBI production team. I am your radio teacher, Rhea Jane Valle Bernardo. Always remember this quote from Steve Rizzo, when the storms of life are pouring down on you, muster up the courage to dance and bless things that life has given you. Have a good day. Patuloy! Patuloy ang edukasyon para sa ating generasyon! Sa daan ng pagkatuto ay walang may iwan! Kaya halina sa Radyo! Radyo! Radyo Eskwela!